General Douglas MacArthur gets credit for the line that rules were mostly made to be broken. Well, you might call it the new motto of the no rules Republican Party. What do I mean by that? Well, House Speaker John Boehner used to go by what's called the Hastert rule. You don't bring a bill to the House floor unless a majority of your fellow Republicans are going to vote for it. Well, to keep the Department of Homeland Security running and on a couple of other issues, he's had to break that rule. Another rule, don't invite a foreign leader into the well of the United States House of Representatives to criticize the President of the United States at a time that very same President of the United States is conducting very sensitive negotiations with a foreign country. But, as we saw with Prime Minister Netanyahu's visit, that rule broken. And this past week, this letter to the leaders of the Islamic Republic of Iran. You don't see that every day. Signed by 47 Republican senators. You see all the names here. This would be a fun contest. Name your senator. 47 Republican senators there sent directly to a foreign nation, essentially saying, hey, if you want to cut a deal with President Obama, fine. But we, the United States Senate, won't abide by it. We will ignore it. It was authored at first by a freshman, Tom Cotton just in the United States Senate. Among the 100 United States Senators, he's in the bottom 10 when it comes to seniority. The old rules, you checked in with your chairman. That would be Bob Corker. He didn't sign the letter. Or you check in with the majority leader, Mitch McConnell. Tom Cotton didn't do that. But again, that rule uh, broke it. Uh, it reminds me, Steve Inskeep, that if you've covered this town for a long time, you tend to process stories by the rules. But is the new rule that, especially with these Republicans, we saw it first in the House with the rise of the Tea Party, now we're seeing it in the Senate, Maybe the new rule is there are no rules. Well, of course, we, we, it's, it's a constant political cycle now. It always has been. But one thing that's on my mind is that unemployment is 5.5%. So if you want to be critical of the president, you have to talk about something other than the economy or talk about the economy in a, in a different way. And here we are talking about foreign policy. I don't know that Iran is among the leading concerns of Americans right now, but is, it is of deep concern to some Republicans. I don't mean to say that all 47 senators were insincere in signing that letter, but they signed it. They signed it perhaps without thinking a lot. And I say that as someone who's uh, traveled to Iran a number of times, covered the story. There seem to be two messages of that letter. One is saying to Iran, we don't think you're very smart. And two, we're going to say it in a way that doesn't make us look very smart. So it does, I don't know that it was the most thought out gesture necessarily, but they did it uh, because they had to talk about something. Right. Not, not that the Republicans care too much about what President Obama thinks of them. It's pretty clear before they wrote this letter and one of the reasons why they wrote this letter. But listen to the president's take. I'm embarrassed for them, for them to address a letter to the Ayatollah, who they claim is our mortal enemy. And their basic argument to them is, don't deal with our president, because you can't trust him to follow through on an agreement. It's close to unprecedented. This was Tom Cotton's idea. He just came over from the House, one of the younger members of the new Republican majority in the Senate. He's a veteran. Uh, John McCain said, oh, well, we did this. We're all getting out of town for a snowstorm. Maybe we should have read a little better. Uh, Ron Johnson said at a breakfast at the end of the week, a Bloomberg breakfast, well, maybe we shouldn't have sent it to the leaders of Iran. We should have just wrote an open letter. Do they still think this was smart on the Republican side, or do they have second thoughts? I checked in with several top Senate Republican staffers and, and chiefs of staff. I said, what happened here? And the answer of the politics is pretty simple. No one wants to be to the left of Tom Cotton. He has so much political capital because he's a favorite of talk radio. The conservative leaders love him. Bill Kristol talks him up as a possible 2016 candidate. And so you have all this hovering over these senators and, 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 and with the hawkish drift in the party, even Rand Paul seemed to sign it. At, at the White House, did they think it was a gift in an odd way? In, in an odd way, I mean, they are more angry or frustrated about this letter than about pretty much any issue that I, ha that I have seen come up over the last few years. This deal to Obama is so central to his legacy. So He wants this deal so badly. And the idea that his political opponents would try to jeopardize it for political reasons just says all you need to know about Republicans in, in his eyes. And, and they feel like they are very close. Perhaps this week we could see movement on a deal. And, and to just have one after another with the Netanyahu speech and now the letter come after them, they are, they are just fuming about this.